Okay, I thought I'd do a short video. I got all the four-wheel drive suspension pieces out, and these are some garbage Toyota Camry uh, five by four and a half, 15 inch wheels. Just kind of give you my ride height I'm looking at. So the front, uh, I'm ordered, I ordered a Welder Series Mustang II front suspension with manual steering rack. And uh, let's see, it's coming in from Ontario, Canada. So a couple of dimensions, uh, you get an idea how well it's gonna set. That's a quart of transmission fluid. Um, the back is probably gonna sit lower, probably an inch or two. And it's also gonna have, uh, those are 20, uh, about 25 inch tall tires. So I think I'm gonna go with about 28 inch tall tire. The uh, side pipes for exhaust are gonna be gone. So a couple of dimensions on here. Let me get these out of the way. So axle center line is in the middle of that snubber and that is uh, about 13 inches. There's quite a bit of frame kick up on this. So that'll give you an idea how low it's gonna be. I'll get rid of the old spring perch there for the rear and the old transmission mount that's across the brackets and hold it, that's gonna be gone. So I'll have about eight inches of frame clearance on the bottom, 13 and a half inches, which if we're about a 26 inch tall, the tire of the actual center line will be in the middle of the bottom of the frame where it's supposed to be. So that's that. And then over here on the back, we'll get to the rear suspension here in just a second, get that out of the way. So right now, it's about eight inches of frame clearance on the bottom to the ground. And we have 17 inches of frame, 17 and a half to the bottom of the snubber. So the independent rear suspension I'm gonna put in is from a Infiniti G35 or a 350Z or a 370Z Nissan, which is five by four and a half inch bolt pattern. There's mounting pads that go nine and a half inches forward and 12 and a half inches back. The gas tank has a support brace. These rivets here are gonna to have to come out and that's gonna to have to be removed. So that'll be probably a straight bar going across and there's wood blocks that hold up the fuel tank. Guys use 69 El Camino gas tanks, get them a 20 gallon tank and set up a 15. Uh, and so, yeah, that's how I laid out the uh, International Scout axles are gonna be gone tomorrow. The guy from Oklahoma is gonna come pick those up. And so then I'll go over a couple things in the interior. Um, got uh, some cool stuff that you wrench it pick apart. I have a 6040 seat from a Jeep Grand Cherokee. These brackets here will basically bolt to, there's a seat riser in the, in the floor of the Jeep. These will bolt basically onto that. So I have a 6040, I got a leather seat, 50% off. I got it for 20 bucks. Then I got a Pontiac uh, Grand Prix floor shifter and center console, which will work out pretty good. We'll probably cut about half of that off because of the seats and everything, but it'll work with my 4L80E. So I got that. And then let's see what else we got over here. I got a Pontiac Fiero steering column, which is uh, shorter than a normal like Camaro or S10 steering column. And the reason for that is I'm gonna shorten that up even more, uh, but it has a little paddle on it where you can lock the uh, ignition right here, the ignition key, which is cool, GM wiring harness. Um, but what I'm gonna run is Toyota Prius has electronic power steering. And this is the Prius column with all the other garbage on it. This spline shaft here, and on the bottom there's another spline shaft when you take it off the column. How this works, essentially, there's a little brain box down there. But on this side, there's an encoder wheel, just like a wheel mouse. And so when you spin the steering wheel, it puts pulses one direction or the other. And that goes into the brain box. And coming out of the brain box, you have power and, and ground, 12 volts. Coming out of there, this is basically like a worm drive. And what that does is that will turn this steering shaft that goes down to the manual rack and pinion steering. So 99% of that's gonna be gone. So then the other cool part, this is the Infiniti G35 rear end. Um, the neat part about it is this, that they're extremely affordable and they're super easy to mount. So the bolt pattern is Ford bolt pattern, five on four and a half. From the factory, there's a, a shock that goes from here up to, into the shock tower in the back of the car. That's gonna be eliminated. I'll run the factory coils, and in the middle of that, I'll run a center bolt shock absorber going up. I'll get to a couple dimensions on that. The angle out of that's on here and the, and the galvanized pipe is on there is just for alignment. So this uh, frame rails on a really Jeep, 46 to 65, 64 ish, are 49 and a half inches wide. So I made my angle iron that wide. And essentially with the up kick in the back, 
This is the back of the differential, pinions over there. This has a two and a half inch rise, which is exactly the same as on the Jeep. So these will basically, I'll put in some two inch square tubing. There's rubber bushings in here for isolation. And I'll show you on a diagram here in a little bit. But basically this is going to bolt to the bottom of the frame and I'll put another two inch square tubing on the front and that'll go toward the front of the, of the truck and that will bolt to the bottom of the frame exactly the same. So the neat part is uh, you can use uh, Nissan Pathfinder, you can swap out the guts on this thing. This thing has like a 315 gear ratio. You can get like 350s or 370s all up to 410s or somewhere in there. And they're essentially they're stronger than a Ford 9 inch. There's guys with 350Zs that are running in nine seconds with turbos and nitrous and they're not breaking them at all. The other cool thing is, is this cradle here, they can make them out of steel. This is actually made out of aluminum. This is actually a fairly lightweight uh, differential setup other than the cast iron center thing. So the 350Z has a two-piece dry shaft. You have a flat flange over there. You have a center pinion bearing a pillow block and then going into the Nissan transmission. I'm going to be running a 4L80E, so I have a suburban aluminum drive shaft. I'll have it shortened and I'll have that U joint made to match up with the suburban yoke. So that's that. So then here are my dimensions. Like I said, the front frame on, an, on the, uh, the Jeep is 13 and a half inches. Uh, at the axle center line, the middle of the door is about 8 inches, and then 17 and a half inches at the rear axle. So, um, kind of a complicated drawing, but it's laid out kind of weird. So, essentially, this is the, uh, the side view, so this would be the front of the truck. So, uh, from the front to the top of the bushing is 14 inches up, and it's 9 and a half inches front forward of the axle center line. And then the rear bushing is 16 and a half inches, that's my 2 and a half inch rise, which is 12 and a half inches behind the axle center line. Right now, if I'm running 26 inch tall tires, it'll give me a 13 inch axle center line, which will give me about three and a half to four inches of clearance uh, from the frame to the axle and the upper control arm right in there. So that's that. Uh, some of these dimensions on the bottom aren't exactly correct. This is the stock frame height, 12 and a half inches at the center of the cab. Uh, nine and three quarter inches forward is 20 inches. This is my bracket. I'm basically going to have my two inch tubing, which bolts to the bottom of that frame. 22 inches factory and the 22 and a half inches in the back, which is 12 and a half inches back from the axle center line. And this is the type of cross member I'm going to be putting on the back of the rear axle. This is based on a 13 inch uh, uh, radius uh, for the rear tire. So that's kind of how I'm going to lay it all out. The other things to note here is the uh, look, this is the front of the truck and this is the back of the truck. So these eyelet bolts for the for here to over there on the back and also on the front on the front is uh, center of those are 37 and a quarter inches and then the rears are 35 and three quarters of an inch and that is like I said nine three quarters inch forward and 12 and a half inches back uh, the hub to hub uh, some people say it's 62 inches I haven't yet to measure it but uh, some of the people say it's 63 or somewhere in there the 350z is the same bolt pattern as Ford it's the most common bolt pattern from all different types of vehicles um, and the frame center line basically from the factory frame is 47 and a half inches. So that's where I'm at. I wanted to get this set up and give an idea kind of of the ride height where we're going to be sitting uh, before winter time sets in.